G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined once again by Druzy. How are you? Yes, lovely Jesse. Thank you for having me on again, even though you're forced to have me on because my dad paid you. Today, we're going to be doing the, not necessarily the top 10 worst ever AFL trades, but probably 10 of the biggest stinkers we've ever seen. We are very familiar with a stinker or two, as <laughs> yeah. you can tell by my YouTube performance in the last month. Yeah, that fart compilation was weird. By <laughs> fart compilation, Jesse means every collab I've done with him on uh, my channel. Yeah, well, actually, that's closer to the truth than you would think. <laughs> <laughs> But today we're talking about trades. Well, after all, it is trade season at the moment, trade period. Trade season well, well and truly in the air. So uh, plenty of rumors and innuendo going around. Yep. Um, and that's why we thought we'd have a look and see what are the biggest stinker trades we've ever seen. Yeah, no, good trade talk. I love a bit of good trade talk. See what stinkers have happened and we're going to talk about them for you. That was really good filler from you. Yeah, it was a <laughs> load of a dog shit. But uh, let's, no. let's get into it. All right, so... We've both got five. I'm going to start with one uh, that is fairly famous retrospectively. So the point of this is more to look at trades where uh, one team has definitely gotten shafted. So that's why it's a terrible trade, okay? So in this instance, I'm going to go with Josh Kennedy from the Sydney Swans. Now, the fact that Hawthorne obviously won three flags with Adam kind of means that they probably didn't miss him too much, but it's pretty wild to think that they actually traded him away for pick 39, which became Sam Grimley, who wasn't that much of a footballer in comparison to Josh Kennedy, who's kind of been a contender for the Brown most years uh, throughout his prime. So can you imagine a Hawthorne team with Josh Kennedy's yeah, junior? Yeah, could have built on that three feet. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Five. Seriously good player there that they let go. I think they traded him with Ben McGlynn as well from memory, who had a very good few years at Sydney as well. So a um, bit of a win for Sydney there, that's for sure. Yeah, but as you said, Hawthorne wouldn't have been complaining. They yeah. absolutely stacked. And um, they took a father-son back through Tom Mitchell, who won a brown low for him anyway. So kind of a weird father-son history between those two clubs. Yeah, that is. It, I've, it wouldn't be as much of a stinker as some of the other ones that are coming up, just because, you know, both sides have had success since. But in hindsight, you know, mm. he's still playing, still at the top level. Yeah. Hawthorne could probably use a Josh Kennedy at the moment. So this one's uh, very recent. It's Jesse Hogan to the Dockers. Dockers have been long calling out for a forward after Pav's left. Still haven't really found anyone. Matt Tavener is more, more of a crab than a football player. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse Hogan come to Frio for pick 6 and 23. When we were calling out for a forward that good, it sort of seemed to make sense at the time. But yeah, Hogan never hit his straps at Frio. Only kicked, I think, 19 goals in his two seasons here. Um, just always looked, I always say this like he needed a nap. Always mm. looked very lethargic. It's probably true. Pick six become Ben King. Yeah, so that's rough. Frio could literally that. have a Benny King in their forward line at the moment. Yeah. But instead, we're stuck with Matt Tabiner and Rory Lobb, who doesn't really give a shit about football. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one because I think most people would look at that offseason and with Neil leaving, I think... I would support yeah. Fremantle's decision to be like, boom, let's get Hogan and lob in. Let's just get some optimism around the place. But it doesn't, it pretty much is like a textbook stinker of a trade for Fremantle's perspective. For so. sure. And as you said, yeah, we needed to do it to free up Lockie Neal because he wanted to leave. So we lost Lockie Neal in the midst of that as well. So True. Lockie Neal out, Ben King out, <laughs> Jesse Hogan in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on a similar note, I'm going to go with Dane Beams getting traded back to Collingwood. Now, this is very harsh because he's obviously his career was cut short through some like personal issues, obviously. But we can't overlook the fact that Collingwood traded pick 18, a 2019 first rounder and 56 for Dane Beams, 41 and 44. This was just the offseason after they played in the grand final. It looked like they were on the edge of taking, you know, well, being a genuine premiership contender for a number of years. So Dane Beams coming in, people were like, this midfield is now the best in the comp. He's literally only played nine games for them. I'm not too sure off the top of my head who Brisbane took with those first rounders, but uh, either way, to give up two first rounders for a guy for nine games, that is a stinker of a trade. Very stinky. Collingwood, yeah, as you said, needed that one more player, that X factor that could come off. And yeah, just mm. be in the rotation in so, hindsight. Stinker. Please. So it's similar to Fremantle. Um, I would say I, I understand why Collingwood did it. I'm not really heaping shit on them, not criticizing them as such. But the point of this video is to look at the trades that did not pan out. All right. 2011, Mitch Clark was traded from Brisbane to Melbourne uh, for pick 12. And that ended up being Sam Doherty. He's one of the best halfbacks in the league at the moment. Where's Mitch Clark? Literally no one knows. Yeah. Well, I actually saw him at a party in 2016. Really? Yeah, he played for my um, my school's like local football team. Yeah. Um, good bloke. Um, but obviously, he had a lot of issues with personal mental health and whatnot. So again, another hard one to telegraph because he did look like he had a bright future. But yeah, in hindsight, was a stinker because he didn't play much for them. And yeah. yeah. Um, quite injury prone and yeah just didn't work out for him did it he definitely had a lot of potential I remember he was a real like hot name getting traded back to WA I think Eagles and Fremantle were both into him even though we didn't need a key forward really talented player like you said but 
picked well of Sam Doherty. Yeah, despite two ACLs, he's had a very good career. So. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Stinky. All right, next up, we've got a very good player here who most people probably won't remember used to play for North Melbourne. I'm talking about Josh Gibson. Obviously, mm. I think at least a three-time premiership player with Hawthorne, not four. Because uh, it was 2009, he uh, was at North, and North made the decision to trade him because he was inconsistent. It says he was traded for two mid-re- mid-draft picks. I don't know exactly what picks they were. I'm guessing second and third rounders. They became Aaron Black and Aiden Kennedy, so I think in the 20s and 30s. Neither of those players really did much, and obviously Josh Gibson went on to be play an important role for a number of years for Hawthorne, playing in, I presume, four grand finals and three premierships as well. Yeah. So, from North's perspective, didn't get a lot in and gave away a very, very good player. Yeah, but would Gibson have been a good player if he had stayed at North Melbourne? It's Maybe a great question. The uh, the coaching prowess of Alistair Clarkson just brought out the best in him. I don't 100% know. agree with that, actually. That's a good call. Fun fact about Josh Gibson, he used to have like 10 Gatorades before every game. Yeah, it was right. Like a weird, That's disgusting. Yeah, like a pregame ritual because it worked for him. So now I'm starting to understand why they traded him. Yeah, absolute freak. But no, great player. Um, one of my <laughs> favourite in that Hawthorne side, actually. Um, but yeah, I think old Clarko brought the best out in him. Did well for, for Hawthorne. Now, this one hurts a lot as a Dockers fan. Um, Trent Crowe. Never got to see him play because he was before my era. Well, but I remember like, Crowe. Yeah? Any good? He was okay, but yeah. not really. He was one of those like real like peak early 2000s Fremantle players like a Troy Simmons and like yeah. just like kind of like like what's the word um, anonymous almost I think yeah. he went to Hawthorne and again back though yeah right he played in the 08 grand final so lots of you might not have heard of Trent Crowe but you might have heard of Luke Hodge um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Dockers <laughs> traded Trent Crowe from Hawthorne um, for pick one we gave up the first pick whose idea was that yeah that's a stinker that was a good draft as well that Luke Hodge draft mm. and we got Trent Crowe there used to be a few number one draft picks traded. Like, I remember, I think the Eagles, um, I think, traded four players for pick one and took Michael Gardner back in the day. Like, back, like the draft wasn't considered that yeah. good, but obviously 2001 is probably the strongest draft of all time. So to give up pick one that year, that's a real stinky trade. It's the most Dockers thing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that is a stinker, and that one stings us to this day, really. Imagine if we had Luke College in 2013. True, yeah, she is. Next up is a player that's not exactly a household name. His name is Christian Jack. She, I'm pretty sure he was one of the earliest picks, like one of the first rounders for GWS when they first came on. I don't yeah. know if it was their first season, I'm not sure. But either way, he's one of those typical players that didn't quite crack it at GWS and got traded to Carlton. There was yeah. like tw- literally 12 players that did that or something like yeah. that. So after not doing a lot, Carlton actually gave up pick seven for Jack. And um, and I think Mark Wiley was part of the deal as well. He was just kind of steak knife. So it was more or less pick seven for, for this guy. In his entire time at Carlton, he literally played seven games for a return of two goals, which is a terrible return for someone you traded pick seven in the draft for. So that is, in recent times, one of the biggest howlers I've seen. I'm looking at the draft now. Uh, Paul Ahern was the actual pick, which is not really the point of this video. Yeah. It's more like the pick seven could have given them the chance to pick up any of the following players. Darcy Peter Moore. Wright. Darcy Moore was a father-son. Lockie Weller, Jake Lever. Le- um, Liam Duggan, Lockie Weller, like you say, that even these guys are all upgrades as well. Jack Steele. Toby Blaine Bokehurst. Oh, pick seven <laughs> for that guy. Um, yeah, definitely overpaying. All right, an absolute icon of our game, Brendan Favola, left Carlton. That was in 2009. Went to Brisbane, and everyone thought the Fevolution was back up and running. But no, he was up running in Brisbane at nightclubs <laughs> doing naughty things. That, that pretty much derailed his career. The trade was Favola, who played 17 games, and pick 27, who didn't play any, Callum Bartlett. They had to give up Lockie Henderson and pick 12, who was Kane Lucas. Mm. Now, Brisbane, obviously, they're contending now. A player like Lockie Henderson would be a great role player in that list. As we say, stinker. Yeah, absolute stinker. That was a real marquee sort of signing back then. There weren't yeah. too many big trades that were moving around around that time. I remember the trade happening. It was a big deal that Fev was going to Brisbane. They were going to make the top four. Mm. And yeah, as you said, did not pan out at all. My fifth and final one is one kind of close to my heart. It's about the Eagles. This is a player, again, no one will remember. Daniel McConnell, he was like a fringe player for the Eagles during that period. We were starting to get good under Cousins and Judd. I remember he had a couple of promising games, but definitely he was a, like a real fringe player. Yeah. If what I'm reading is correct, he was traded for a first rounder and a second rounder. Pick 13 and 29. That is crazy. So straight off the bat, why is a club playing paying pick 13 and 29 for a guy who had uh, was a second rounder two years before and hadn't really played too much footy? Um, and then he went on to play four games for North Melbourne and got delisted within two seasons as well. So that That's is terrible. pretty stinky, hey? That's very stinky. Yeah, I know that they used to trade 
picks around a little bit more freely back then, but this was 2005. And That's an absolute diarrhea of a trade. Yeah, hey. that really is, yeah. <laughs> Should we call this AFL diarrheas? Yes. I wonder it's if either of those are in shot. No, let's keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> right, the last one uh, that I've got is Sammy Jacobs to Adelaide. So he played for the Blues. Um, they probably didn't need another Ruckman with Cruiser, although he quite injury prone. Cruiser. True. Yeah. Um, but yeah, got rid of him to Adelaide and had a stellar career at Adelaide. He was their best Ruckman during that period when they were at the top. Still going at GWS, isn't he? Or I think he's he just still retired? on the list or he might have retired. I'm yeah. not sure. He's he... at the end of his career now, but yeah. Ruckmans are hard to come by. Um, and Ruckmans. Yeah, Ruckmen. <laughs> Ruckmans. And yeah, trading away big source in hindsight. You wouldn't do it. So 34 was Patrick McCarthy and 67 was Andrew McKines. So, you know, stinker. Yeah, that yeah. is a stinker. Uh, again, unlucky again, because Jacobs wasn't necessarily like um, tearing it up at Carlton, but they mm. traded him and he's become one of the best Ruckman for a very important period of Adelaide there. Yeah, so. one of the best Ruckmans of like the 10s, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah, you said Ruckmans again. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, there it is. That is 10 trades that we thought were absolutely stanky. Stankier than Daniel Busher on a Saturday night, and that's for sure. Um, probably not, literally. <laughs> yeah, not that stinky. <laughs> I love you, Bush. Thanks for watching True Footy. Once again, get around Druzy and his channel. I'll leave the link to that in the description. Get That's why I'm here. <laughs> that was a joke. Clout, bro. I'm out of form, hey. I'm struggling so yes, hard. Yes, I love it. Clout, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. See you later. That's yeah. my line. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Cheers. Thanks, guys, and see you later. <laughs>